Welcome to Church Media Production. I'm Andrew, and today we're going to be setting up our Atham Studio for use with green screen. So let's get started. So if you look at the output currently, you can see that it's currently set to the green screen, which we want to get rid of that so that way you can have a background and it looks something like that. Of course, it'll be a, probably a person, not an object. So to do this, you want to go into the Atham software controller and then you want to go to your upstream key. And then from there, you want to choose what your fill source is going to be. So of course, if we make this black, it'll change to black, which I renamed mine so it's at camera one. But of course you can do this as whatever camera you want. So if you want to change the labels so they make more sense to you like they did for me, you can go into the gear icon, go to labels, and then I'm just using input one, which is our HDMI, which is straight from our only camera we have. And then just make sure you say save when you're done. And then so the important thing that you want to do on here when you're actually in the upstream key is you want to set this to whatever camera you're going to use. So the hue is going to be for whatever color your green screen is. So if you see on the output now, if I change this, it kind of changes what's being keyed. So like if you want to key out the guy's face, his hair, or we, can put, or we can kind of key out his body itself if you want to. So we're going to go ahead and leave that up where we had it. And then your green, your green is kind of the amount of key that is going away. So you generally, I try to do that at about where it's just starting to kind of go back to the, the black as you can see. Because if you get too much, then it gets rid of everything, which we don't want to do that. The closer you can get it, the less fuzzy it will be. And then your Y sharpness, that's actually what gets rid of the remainder of the background, like the shadows and stuff. So that one we want to kind of keep about there. And then the lift, this one's the important one because this one actually controls the background itself. So as you can see, if I go too far up, it goes black. If I go too far that way. So what I was having issues with when I first did this is I kept messing with the lift because you can kind of get it to do that if you adjust it like that. But what you want to do is you want to keep that kind of up and then the lift needs to be down as much as you can get it. And then that will get you the desired results. And then of course you can do the narrow key range if you want. I usually try to keep that on if I can, but sometimes it gives a little green, green tint to it if you can see, which isn't the end of the world for this shot. And then if you want to, you can do a mask to kind of cut down the edges, but you have to be careful with that because sometimes if someone is like moving their arms, they can go outside the screen and then it can cut it out and we don't want that. The other thing is the flying key, which this will actually let you move it to a certain spot. So like if we do this at like eight, five, and then we can move it to like five, we'll have to go more than that, to like five. So if you want to move it so it's like off to the side or up in the corner or something, depending if you're doing like a live stream, a commentary type thing, you can move it up to the side and then you can have whatever else is in the main part of your background. But then as you can see, there's a little thin line right there, so you might want to do like the mask crop and then kind of adjust that a little bit just to get rid of it. But one thing I have noticed with that is if your separation isn't quite perfect, you'll see a thin line from where it fades in if you don't have the green screen out completely. And then to get your background, all you have to do is if you go in here to media, you just drag it into any of these slots and then drag it into whatever slide you want it here. So like if we wanted to use this window, we could use the window. And then to set that, if you go over to the switcher, you just want to make sure that your whatever background you're using is set to So you could have it be another camera if you want, or something like that. Or like if you want two of the same. And then when you go to switch it, it'll just switch it for you. The other important thing is after you do this, I always make a backup because I've had this where I go to start it up and it just forgets everything that I've done on it. 
So I usually try to keep a current backup of everything just in case. And that's about all you gotta do to get your green screen working. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon. Leave us a comment, share it, like it, and we will see you next time.